Swift Savage. Before we move on to the next video, I want to briefly thank today's sponsor, Casetify. Case. A new high-tech way to find out who's at the door. With a video doorbell, you'll never miss a visitor. All he's doing, chat. Oh, fuck all that. I hate In the past chat. few years, the world has seen a boom in the use of doorbell cameras, mainly because of instances like this. Oh, they got a camera! Capturing and exposing criminals in the act, Couldn't from the most petty off? of thieves, all the way to attempted murderers and kidnappers. Due to their knack for capturing disturbing encounters, the videos that have emerged from these devices have practically carved out their own genre here on YouTube, to the point that many, including myself, have almost become desensitized to them. But recently, a video began making the rounds, showing the events that transpired at a Las Vegas home on the evening of July 21st, 2021, and it proved to no, be one no of the way. most chilling I have ever seen. It happened around 8 p.m., where a young lady had been working in her kitchen, waiting for her husband to return home from work. It was another 100 degree day in Vegas, and likely in an attempt to cool down, she would open her window to let the evening breeze in. Unbeknownst to her, this harmless decision would lead to a terrifying series of events. Outside of the home, a man had been wandering the suburban streets aimlessly, roaming throughout the neighborhood before stopping in his tracks. In front of him was the open window, and a clear view of the woman inside. It was a chance sighting that would lead to the man approaching the house and ringing the doorbell, where the camera would begin to record. I'm gonna say it before. And I've seen a lot of... Are you chat. sure? I just rang your doorbell because I have a couple questions for you. Are you sure? I just rang your doorbell because I have a couple of questions. Are you sure? Oh, that, that's really scary. I, uh, what? Are you sure? I just rang your doorbell because I have a couple of questions for you. Are you sure? Jesus, this guy! The man stands there ringing the doorbell and knocking at the door, repeating the same sentences over and over again, calmly stating that he just wants to ask a few questions. <laughs> However, the woman inside had never met this man. In fact, she had never seen him before this moment. And to make it all stranger, she didn't respond to anything the man was saying and was out of his line of view as he peeked through the door. So the phrases that he was saying were not in response to anyone. And instead, he was speaking to himself. Fearing for her safety, the woman inside didn't open the door or engage him at all, leading the man to take things a step further. Are you positive? I just have a couple questions for you. Jeez, this guy. Are you sure? Are you positive? Are you sure? Are you absolutely certain? He begins trying to open the door, but thankfully it was locked, causing the strange man to start walking away, cursing nah, his fuck all that. The footage is incredibly off-putting, and although the man seems to stay perfectly calm, there was something very aggressive and erratic about the way he was speaking, making one wonder what his true intentions were when he approached the house. As the man begins to walk away, the woman's husband, still at work, would chime in through the doorbell after noticing the situation begin to unfold, which in turn would lead to the man revealing why he was ringing the doorbell. Oh, hell no, why? So, who are you? What? Yeah? Are you sure? Who are you? Hey, I just had a couple questions. I just wanted to ask you about uh, maybe you yeah, can you hear me? Uh, what I'm looking for is for the girl that's in the house to come out here because I'm going to rip her and kill her. Can you have her open the door? I'm going to rip and kill the girl that's on the other side of this door when she lets me in. It was no secret what he had planned for that evening. He outright says it, even revealing that he had the weapons to make it happen. I, I want to rip her and kill her because I have a knife and a gun. And I just, uh, I'm gonna knock on her door again. 
If that woman had opened the door, or if that door had been unlocked, well, we know what would have happened. But thankfully, neither of those situations played out, and instead, the man walked away muttering the same phrases over and over again. Alright, that was really scary. What? Even staring at the house for a few moments before finally disappearing into the night. Bro, did Police were called to the area moments later, but the man was nowhere to be found. As quickly as he had entered this couple's life, he was now gone, leaving them with the reality that at any moment, he could return. Scared for her life, the lady posted the clip online where it would quickly go viral across YouTube, which honestly may have ended up saving a life. The following day, a viewer of the video would recognize the same man walking in another residential area, in one that was not too far away from the house where the encounter took place. And after the police were called, the man would be quickly arrested before he could play out his disturbing fantasy. When confronted and asked for his name, the man would simply state that he was the Holy Spirit and oh, said no. nothing more. Though his real name was revealed to be Christopher Sums, a man who had passed charges of stealing, assaulting, and intimidating a witness, with his mugshot being nothing short of completely haunting. Jesus, but what I found most surprising was the fact that he didn't always look like this. In fact, just a few years ago, he looked completely normal. And according to his LinkedIn, he had a fairly impressive work history and what seemed to be a good life until for whatever reason, things spiraled in the wrong direction. Is the Vegas effect or what? As it stands, Christopher is being evaluated to see if he is mentally fit to stand trial, as many believe that he likely suffers from some kind of psychological condition, hence the repeating phrases and the strange behavior. Though his blatant and rapid change in appearance might also point to heavy drug use or even a combination of both. Or just a bad but regardless of what was behind his behavior that day, the situation and the subsequent video is haunting and could have been so much worse had that door been opened. Are you sure? I feel like everyone's out to get Hello, this is Bro, there's something chilling, dude. Even when they're like skinny or lanky or whatever, dude, right? That's way more scarier than, than like big dudes or whatever the fuck. People that look ill as fuck and do unpredictable because they're unpredictable. You know, know what they're gonna do. They have no idea. Is he gonna charge at you and shit like that? Is he gonna charge at you with, with some some fucking some stick or something? You don't know what he's gonna do. YouTube is a site that draws in people from all walks of life, each with their own unique motivation for starting up their channels. Some are in it for the money and the fame, while others are in it for the love of creating content. But sprinkled throughout the site are a select few who come here to feel heard and to get something off their chest. Something that for 27-year-old Tabebe Mokanen would be his primary motivation for posting his first and only video on March 17, 2018. Tabebe had struggled his whole life with mental illness, suffering from both schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. These mental illnesses led to an event in 2013 where he would wander off from his home unprovoked. Outside, he began to walk for miles, essentially in a daze, before finding himself in what he described as a very dangerous part of town. Thankfully, Tabebe would be safely found before anything had happened to him, but this incident would prove to be life-changing, as it would lead to his hospitalization due to his unpredictable and dangerous behavior. This would also start a long spell of being given heavy medication to help with his schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. Over the course of the next four years, Tabebe would find himself in and out of the hospital and prescribed a variety of powerful antipsychotic drugs. That's so bad. Something that would consume his life as he felt like he was no longer in control of his actions. And feeling trapped, he would turn to YouTube to share his what story. Hello, this is Tabebe Mukhanin. Hold up, hold on. Yes, I don't know the video too much, okay? There's a guy in my neighborhood that, well, when I was young who was convicted of something, and then he did like plead insanity or something like that, and he was on these drugs, and the dude would walk in, in, in shoes or sandals that were all the way worn out to where his foot, both his feet were touching the ground. So his foot was bowing through the shoes, and he was walking all day, all night, across the neighborhood, he was just walking. And any time we see somebody, he'd say, yo dude, you gotta, you gotta smoke, bro, it's my, it's my birthday. He was on a loop, he just, wait, you remember, 
Holy fuck, this guy knows! Holy shit! Dude! What the fuck? He knows! Jesus, man, he still does it! Oh, dude, dude, it must have been 15 years now. Holy shit. I'm talking and putting this video because I wanted to bring awareness to a situation that I'm dealing with that's very uh, painful. I was hospitalized June 25th, 2013. I went there to supposedly get an IV. I ended up being forced to take medication. And um, it was pure hell. Um, they gave me Haldol, Risperidol, and they were forcing antipsychotics down my throat. It was absolute torture and hell. In the 10 minute video, Tabebe made it clear that he was not consenting to this medical treatment. And he explained how the medication he was forced to take made him feel like a zombie, even saying that it had gotten so bad that he had thoughts of taking his own life. It was bad, it was really bad. And I had to no ideation. Throughout the clip, Tabebe comes across as intelligent and well-spoken, but traces of his illness shine through periodically. For instance, he explains how immediately after being released from the hospital on multiple occasions, he would wander away from his home, even attempting to be homeless for a while, while admitting that he didn't know why this was an issue or why it would always lead to him going back to the hospital. I got off and I think I had another episode, or episode as they like to say, where I said I wanted to be homeless. That's it. All I said was I wanted to be homeless. So, and I, and I proceeded to be homeless. And next thing I know, the cops came and they arrested me and they took me back to the hospital. Then after that, I left and I, and I tried to be homeless again. And I was hospitalized again. Just, but things would be really further sad, escalated yes. as Tabebe casually explains how he has violent outbursts, even resorting to punching multiple people who were trying to give him medication as well as starving himself in retaliation. So I started getting violent and I started punching people and I started attacking people in the hospital and they had to tie me down. I began to lash out like, I'm gonna protest this. I'm going to starve myself as a way of hopefully stopping this ridiculous forced treatment for absolutely nothing. And by the end of the video, Tabebe flat out explains that he does not have any sort of mental illness or have any symptoms for that matter, calling Shit. what was happening to him an injustice. I guess I'm just trying to let you guys know that is the injustice up. that goes on. It's a truly depressing situation, as on one hand, he is being forced to take medication that essentially makes him feel dead inside. While on the other hand, it seems very apparent that treatment is necessary to not only keep others around him, but himself safe, as he doesn't seem fully aware of how serious some of his actions are. Tabebe concluded the video by asking those watching what they thought of his situation, and though it didn't garner many views, a select few would stumble upon it and agree with his stance that the treatment he was receiving was unlawful, with many insinuating that he should continue to protest and not take his medication. These comments are, unfortunately, no longer available, as just a few weeks ago, the video was removed, but they had been reflected across multiple sites it. as people called out the commenters for essentially trying to convince someone to go off his medication cold turkey, and doing so without knowing the true extent of his medical history, which obviously is irresponsible and potentially very dangerous. But unfortunately, these conflicting viewpoints came years later. And in that time surrounding the video's release, Tabebe had likely found the verification he was looking for. He was going to keep protesting his medication. This video would be the first and last that we would ever hear from Tabebe, but it wouldn't be the last we'd hear of him. Oh, no. Just two months following the video, Tabebe would make the local news after having an encounter at the hospital. There, a therapist entered his room to talk with him, when suddenly Tabebe snapped, grabbing her and refusing to let go, while performing lewd gestures toward her and eventually pinning her on the ground, refusing to let her go. The situation led to Tabebe being arrested for sexual battery, but no jail time was ever given, as instead, a plea deal was reached where Tabebe agreed to stay in the hospital. And oh, most no. importantly, GGs. he agreed to go back on his medication and take it as prescribed. 
It's this note that hints at the idea that he had likely gone off his medication before this incident, something that would have directly led to his violent outburst. And given the event's proximity to the video that he had just posted, and the comments supporting his desire to stop taking his medication, it's not hard to theorize that Tabebe may have cut off his meds due to the advice of his comment section, or at the very least was further convinced that it was the right thing to do. Regardless, it seemed clear that the inconsistencies with his medication had caused him to lose control, and this wouldn't be the last time. In the summer of 2019, Tabebe was staying at an Embassy Suites hotel with his mother, Zalem Abje, who had been caring for him around the clock. He had been moved there from the hospital as part of his treatment plan, as it kept him close by and easy to monitor regularly. There's more but it also this. made him free of being cooped up in a hospital room, which clearly he didn't enjoy. The change of scenery was likely supposed to calm Tabebe and his growing anger issues, but unfortunately, his violent outbursts did not stop there. On August 20th at 1.30 a.m., Tabebe would get into an altercation with his mother in their hotel room. It's not clear what had started the arguments, but things would quickly turn physical, as Tabebe started to shove his mother, pushing her so hard that it would knock her out of the room, and then onto their balcony. Their room was on one of the top floors of the hotel, and it overlooked the lobby down below. And in one more violent outburst, Tabebe would give one final push, this time knocking her all the way over the railing, causing her to plummet to the ground below. She did not survive the impact. Tabebe Makanen was arrested at the scene and held at a holding center where he remains to this day, awaiting his trial. Though his crime is clear, and it's likely he will spend the rest of his life either behind bars or in some kind of institution. Jesus. The events that happened on that fateful morning are still somewhat unknown to this day, though we do know the events that led up to it, and the years of hurt and anger that Tabebe had built up, as well as his inconsistent and dangerous use of antipsychotics. Which, unsurprisingly, it appears that he had again attempted to take himself off of his meds in the time surrounding his murderous fit, with this being used as the likely reason for his behavior that day, something that was telegraphed in one single video, which, looking back, almost foreshadows the tragic events that were soon to come. Events that may have been Wait, further spurred on by the viewers watching the zombie. It's a miracle happened right out of a zombie. Huh? Our next video takes us across the world to the Philippines in mid-July 2014. The story begins on a tragic note as a family says their goodbyes to their three-year-old daughter. In the days prior, the young girl had developed a severe fever and without access to an up-to-date medical facility, she would pass away in the morning hours on July 12th. Wait, what the fuck? With no pulse and no heartbeat, the little girl was pronounced dead and taken home to prepare for the funeral, which would be held the next day. It was obviously a somber event, as the girl was placed in her casket and the lid was shut. Family members and loved ones gathered around to celebrate the short life of a child who deserved so much more, and watch as she was placed into the ground, which would be her final resting place. Mm -hmm. But before that would happen, one of the neighbors had been in charge of arranging the young girl's body before burial. Though something strange happened when he went to do fine. so. Inside the coffin, the young girl's head began to move. It was a slight twitch, but in a panic, the neighbor checked for a pulse only to discover that her heart was still beating and the young girl was breathing. One of the family members begins to record as the sudden wave of realization hits that the child was actually alive. Uh, yo. <laughs> I'm confused. Did nobody ever check the pulse before? It's the ultimate case of what if. Had that person not opened the casket to reposition the body, then that little girl would have been buried alive, and no one would have ever known. It's a clip that I'm sure many of you have seen by now, as the original video itself has garnered over 1 million views. And topping that, a new station that covered the story currently sits with 25 million views. 
It's one of the more viral horror stories that I've ever seen on YouTube, as seemingly everyone know, knows about either. this infamous video. And rightfully so, I mean it's one of the craziest stories I have ever seen, both on YouTube or in the news. But the only problem yeah. is, this viral video didn't tell the whole story. Oh, I knew it. The story itself does in fact appear to be true, having been confirmed by Philippine officials who admitted that a mistake had been made in that particular hospital, which led to the mix-up and almost to the mistaken burial. But the story doesn't have the happy ending that many of us thought, as in reality, that child never actually woke up. She did have a pulse and shallow breathing, but she would never regain consciousness and remained in a comatose state. In fact, just two days after this video was taken, and on the 15th of July, she would once again be pronounced dead, this time for real. But looking back on the it viral video practice. viewed by millions, the anchors say that she was fine, calling it a miracle. Happy tears, knowing that the ba thankfully she's, she's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm glad they opened that casket to check to yeah. move around. Mm -hmm. Now, it may be possible that they just didn't know this at the time, as based off of the way they're talking, it seems like their report would have came out the day or the day after the child was found alive. I don't want to watch this. It's just, it's just, Only, that's not true to... either, as the child was determined to be alive on the 13th of July, and once again pronounced dead on the 15th, just two days later. Yet this video was published a full month later, on August 13th, 2014. So what? when this video went live, that little they girl knew. was long gone. And this is something that they likely knew, as it had been well reported in other major news outlets on the day of her actual passing. I mean, nowadays, even the top Google result for this incident Did mentions her passing, it out? and it came out on the very day it happened. So when this video went live, they had to have known it wasn't true. What started on its own as one of the darkest videos on the site has now become even more twisted as the true ending has been revealed. A miracle that turned out to be nothing more than a mirage, leading to even more heartbreak as the family was now forced to grieve and come to terms with this girl's passing twice. And it's made even worse by the news report that has essentially rewritten the story's ending. But looking at just the video and the story as is, of how everything unfolded, it's still truly horrifying that this little girl was almost buried alive, whether she was conscious or not. So what, and it makes me wonder how many others have been visual? in that dreadful situation, buried alive what by fuck? mistake. The answer to that question is one that we'll quite literally never know, since it is sealed within the claustrophobic so walls of a dark coffin, with no hope of escape. And that's the end of Computers are coming your way. Divorce is often one of the more traumatic experiences that a young child can go through, as many are left in a state of confusion and chat, distress chat, chat, chat. at such a tumultuous time in their life. And for a young man named Daniel Bartlam, his childhood was sadly no different. Growing up in Nottinghamshire, England, Daniel's parents, Jackie and Adrian, would separate following the birth of Daniel's younger brother, with the situation leading to a split in the family as the young boys would move to a new home with their mother. This brought Daniel to an unfamiliar town as well as a brand new school, and to top it all off, Daniel's mother would soon find a new partner, further adding to the confusion that Daniel must have been feeling. All of these circumstances would lead Daniel to a declining mental state as he began to isolate himself in his room, barely speaking to his family. Daniel's mother, Jackie, was well aware of the change in his behavior, and she soon thought of the perfect way to bring him out of this depression. So she saved up some money on the side until she eventually had enough to buy Daniel his very own iMac, oh, a computer oh, that he had been asking for for years. At the time, Daniel had a vested interest in technology, even having his own YouTube channel dedicated to the topic. But this new computer meant an upgrade in quality and a future with limitless possibilities. Overjoyed, Daniel quickly began a new channel and dedicated his very first upload to his new device. Holy iMovie. Oh, what the fuck I used to Edit. Hello YouTube, this is Daniel AB1702 here, and it's finally happened. I now have uh, an iMac. 
I can now make bigger and better videos. Yeah, where's the video is clearly nothing too special, as the quality is about what you would expect from a kid his age who is just starting out. And the following videos were much the same, with these uploads simply being compilations what? from a show he liked. It all may not have seemed like much, oh, damn, but this computer, ripper. along with this new channel, seemed to be the spark that he so badly needed, a new passion and a new outlook on life. But strangely, after just a few uploads, the account would go silent. This is something that happens all the time on YouTube, yep. where a creator starts posting with high aspirations before abandoning their work, and it's typically due to a lack of success or just the overall busyness of life. But in Daniel's case, his reason for leaving was far darker, as right around the time of his oh, last no. upload, he would experience the ultimate tragedy. On the morning of April 25th, 2011, Neighbors of Daniel had reported hearing a commotion coming from his home. That commotion would soon turn to chaos as the house suddenly erupted into flames with smoke billowing out all sides. Through the commotion, Daniel would emerge from the home with his little brother and dog in hand, but his mother was nowhere to be found. Police and fire units arrived at the scene quickly, but were already too late as inside the home, they would find the badly burned and disfigured body of Jackie. And surprisingly, Yo. they'd soon notice that it wasn't the fire that had done her in, but rather, she had been brutally murdered with what appeared to be a hammer. The scene was shocking and incredibly chaotic, but luckily, Daniel had been there to explain everything. According to the child, a masked burglar had entered the home before confronting his mother. Okay, the confrontation dude. then led to the anonymous person attacking Jackie with a hammer, causing her to collapse to the floor. He then says the intruder lit her body on fire, leading Daniel to grab his brother and dog and escape from the blaze, I mean, saving what remained of his family as the murderer escaped out the back. I mean they know Daniel's story stood you know, out right? for several reasons, mainly because it showed Daniel was a hero for saving his brother and dog, and it showed just how traumatic that morning must have been for him, as in the matter of one day, Daniel had lost his home and his mother Sorry, in well. probably the most devastating way imaginable. But his story also stood out for one other reason, with that reason being in regards to the killer. As police began their investigation, they searched and searched for any clues left behind from this supposed masked intruder, but they found nothing. No fingerprints, no footprints, no chat. anything. How did good chat at figuring out what is the initial start of a fire? How did they know? And looking for any semblance of a lead, they started to search through Daniel's room, where through the charred remains, they miraculously found his computer in perfect working order. Authorities oh, would search the burns. child's device when they stumbled upon something rather bizarre. It was a story that Daniel had typed months before in a Word document that was set as the scene of a soap opera that he had been writing. The story read, Daniel Bartlam, 1997 to 2047, the longest serving male character to be on the show. The only place he couldn't get away with his deeds was with his mother, Jackie. What so one fuck? evening, he made it look as though it was a break-in and murdered his mother with a hammer and then set her and the family home alight, but helped his brother out to safety and got his neighbors to contact the police. The story ends with Daniel lying to the police and getting away with murder. Well, it was a shocking revelation, oh, as his mother had been plot. killed with a hammer and set on fire through what Daniel had described as a break-in, just as his story was written. And to make it all stranger, further investigation would reveal that in the days prior to Jackie's death, Daniel had attempted to delete the document, though he had failed to fully remove it. And the findings went deeper, as countless screenshots and clips of a character from a show called Coronation Street were found on the hard drive, with it appearing as though Daniel had an obsession with this character, which proved to be rather interesting, as the character, John Stape, was a villain who had murdered another character with a claw hammer, the same weapon used on his mother. Investigators would keep digging until they eventually found the nail in the coffin, as it was revealed that in the days prior to the attack, Daniel had searched how to get away with murder. 
With the slew of information and the lack of evidence that a break-in oh, had ever well, occurred, the like Daniel's story quickly fell apart, until he eventually admitted the gruesome truth that he had been the one who had taken his mother's life. On the 24th of April, Daniel would spend the night in his room re-watching one of his favorite Saw movies. He then emerged from the room carrying a claw hammer and approached his sleeping mother. He proceeded to strike her seven times in the face before eventually setting her body on fire and escaping the home with his brother and dog, well, acting as the hero who had quote unquote match, saved the day, when in reality it was all his doing. And the entire series of events had been plotted out on the very computer that his mother gave him, the same computer that he had so excitedly made this video on just months before the attack. To this day, we don't really know why Daniel chose to attack his mother, as any reason he's given has been fairly easily disproven, with many chalking it up to his tumultuous childhood. Though we have learned more information about his early years, with many of these stories proving to be incredibly disturbing and hinting at the idea that Daniel was mentally unwell. For instance, it was said that he had an obsession with gruesome movies and games, that seemed to inspire his own violent thoughts as he began watching these graphic films at the age of eight. He took these films as inspiration to start writing his own stories, which almost always ended in death and murder, and the details of which were said to be incredibly intense. And in a much darker example, about six weeks before the murder, during a normal day at school, Daniel began desperately yanking at his tie, insisting that it was I mean... trying to strangle him. When further asked about this, he then That's revealed it. that he even though it's all about films, blame the video games. Blame the video games. Now, I don't think blame the video games, but I just think that it's, it's kind of it's kind of dumb to, to be, dude. People that they, there's information about stuff everywhere. If he's not getting it from a movie, he's gonna get it from some other documentary or fucking piece of, of media. It, that's just, you can't hide history. That's just he was hearing voices, and those voices were telling him to hurt people. But surprisingly, after being given a psychiatric evaluation, the counselor told his mother that there was nothing wrong with Daniel. But to be on the safe side, they did offer counseling that Jackie would quickly deny. A decision that, for her, may have ultimately proven fatal. Whatever made Daniel snap that day, it was seemingly a long time coming. And despite his young age, he would be sentenced to life in prison, with a chance for parole coming in the distant future. But the truly tragic note here is about his mother, Jackie, as she bought her son that iMac that he so clearly loved, and she yeah. did so in the hopes that it would bring some much-needed happiness during such a tough time in his life. How could she have known that, in reality, Daniel would turn around and use that very computer to plan and eventually carry out her very own... She would actually see if games really influence behavior, you would be starting Dallas Cowboy QB with how well you throw. Okay, Joel, I'm, oh, dude, I don't even know why I read that shit. I don't even know why. I, I, I want to give a huge thank you that. to my gold tier and god tier patrons Ali Farmer, Barry Winstanley, Bazoo42, Brandon Flores, Karen S, Donovan Aaron, Emily Gray, Game Gamer, J Money, Just Dallas. Check, chat, guys, guys, I'm gonna keep it about chat. Um, chat, I feel nauseous. I'm seeing blurry. I, I feel my head's under pressure. I slept like I slept like five hours in the past like two and a half days. I, I, I you know, I'm, I'm gonna call it. So this is really good video chat. Guys, I really get them to the chat. I just, I just, I, I, just, I just feel odd. It's like shortest, shortest room of all time. Kelly, Catherine Ross, Lacey, Mark P. Well, non Luke Music, Quinn Kiwi, Robert Rubito, Sam Lutfi, Skelly, Sub. What is this? Feeling.